Welcome to Cornerstone Church, and thank you for tuning in to another podcast. I'm here with Pete and Ben. Hello. Hello. And I'm Tom. We're pastors at the church, and today we are going to be thinking about the subject of food and feasting and eating together, and why that's been so important for us as a church, why we love to eat together, and we'll be thinking about what the Bible says about feasting. Mm. Um, But I thought we would begin with this question. If you could, and if you are a vegan or a vegetarian... Um, this is your trigger warning, so don't be too upset by what comes next. But if you could only choose one animal to eat mm. for the rest of your life, so mm. let's say you had to either choose the pig and all pig products, the chicken and all that came from a chicken, and that would be your that one animal. An that would include an egg. Oh, right, well, that's... Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that would mean you... So, for instance, if you chose chicken, mm. you could have, you know, KFC and eggs, mm. but you could never have bacon or a steak mm. again. Mm. So you had to choose. What What do you think, you know... Oh, man. You would go for? I feel like the chicken gives you more variety because there's, there's quite a lot you can do with an egg. And, um, yeah... It's but, a shame that a pig doesn't lay an egg. It? <laughs> I, I think if, if a animal. pig laid an egg, <laughs> yeah. I, I would definitely Hands go for down. pork because uh, for pig because you've got uh, lovely pork um, mm. sausages, sausages, bacon, you know, pork hams, belly, mm, ribs. You know, I think uh, you know ham pie. So mm. it, can we have the pig laying an egg? <laughs> uh, not in this world. No. Okay. Um, I think the egg really does change yeah. it. Because yeah, you can do so much with an egg. Yeah, yeah. you can. Um, so we're farming chickens then. So, but if you if you, if you went for pork, you you can't have an egg. You you couldn't like have a no. emu egg. What's an emu got to do with it? No, because you're saying that there's only one type of meat. Yeah. And now the egg has been included. And <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Really <laughs> <upsetting>. <laughs> yeah. I mean beef. What about beef? I mean steak, lasagna. You know mince. Mm. Um, spaghetti bolognese, biltong, uh, beef yeah. jerky, yeah. Um, you know, slow cooked steak and onion I still, pie. I still go for pork over that, but the, but the egg is the problem. Yeah. Mm. Because if you're saying you can have pork, but you cannot have any egg. No, you like can't have an egg because that's the chicken. Egg. Right. Yeah. I think this conversation does make you appreciate the goodness of God in giving us a variety of different does. meats, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, Okay, well, we're not going to find unity on that subject, I don't think, but we might elsewhere. Mm. Um, So let's think about eating at Cornerstone Church. Why has uh, eating together and church lunches and hospitality, why has that been such a big deal for us? What's Mm. Well, well, first of all, it is worth saying it has. Yeah. I think that we established that right from the beginning, that actually, you know, the church eating together was a was a very main part of fellowship. Um, uh, you're, you're sharing, you know, your food and uh, and it's an opportunity to talk and um, it's sort of informal um, fellowship there. I think and so we've always done that. And we've we, we we used to do you know without the throughout the month it would be. Um, a church lunch where everybody came together and shared stuff. Uh, and then you would have uh, sort of home group lunches. Uh, and then we would uh, try to encourage people to, you know, invite people around their homes and stuff like yeah. that. Because I because I, I actually think it's, uh, it's how we're created. Mm. And I think it's what God um, uh, lays down, really. Uh, mm. You know, you get it certainly in the New Testament in the early church that they're breaking bread and eating together um and you can see that in a number of places in the new test i mean we can look these verses up yeah but the whole food is one of the sort of themes you could take through the bible Mm -hmm. couldn't you really yeah yeah i think there's something um humbling about eating together as well which which is really good for us um Because when you sit around one table and you eat together and you're sharing from one pot and you're breaking from bread and sharing the same juice or drink or whatever it is, 
Um, it, it is humbling to be to be served by others, isn't it? To talk to others, to eat with others, to show that you need that as well. Um, so I think it does do something to kind of attack pride because mm. you laugh together, don't you? And you open up together and you show yourself eating and you might spill something. Mm. Or it, I think there's all kinds of ways it just takes us down a few pegs eating together, mm. which, which is really good. I mean, yeah. I remember when I very... One of my first memories of coming to Cornerstone just shortly after or during the time I was being converted was coming to something called Open Home, which we used to have. And I remember one of the uh, one of the guys in the church who's now an elder invite, invited me in and uh, I, I walked over there with a handful of other students. And, um, you know, at that time I was absolutely sold on a kind of evolutionary explanation of the, of the, of the world. And uh, I remember seeing a book on his shelf that was just entitled evolution colon the lie <laughs> um and i remember thinking it thinking oh this is mad this is this is madness these these people and yet we then sat down and i think we had food on our on our laps in the lounge and kind of ate together and talked and laughed and i think there's something in that you know the lord uses the meal to mm. sort of undercut a proud objection to something mm. do you know what i mean mm. um mm. yeah the thing some yeah. people write on facebook would never have be said in a living room with a mm. bowl on your no. on their lap would they? yeah mm. no. only by a very very odd person but uh yeah largely it, it, it's hard to argue when mm. you're eating together isn't it yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember um, I, I preached actually not long ago uh, at a church nearby um, on food. So I did a food overview of the Bible. Oh. And one of the things I, I started off by saying was how it's, it's not just in the church that food's such an important thing. Obviously, that's an obvious thing to say culturally around the world. Food mm. is the center of all life, really, isn't it? The yeah. family life. Because um, you, you have to do it three times a day or however many times a day. And um, I read this uh, food psychologist that was talking about, I think it was something like one in nine families eat a meal together a day. Um, most families don't eat together. Breakfast is like scattered. People are running out the door. Lunch, people are at work or at school. And then in the evening, some parents come home late. Some kids are in front of the TV. They yeah. eat at different times. So it's now quite rare for a family to eat together. Yeah. But she was also a family um, sort of relational therapist. And she said that a, a, the family dinner table chat deals with almost all the issues she has to deal with in family therapy. Mm -hmm. So she said if a family is eating together regularly, mm -hmm. the, the children are encouraged, they're, um, they're hurt, they're listened to, mm -hmm. um, worries are shared and discussed, mm -hmm. yeah. um, parents are connecting with their children. So she says the family meal is like this almost silver bullet miracle mm -hmm. eating together mm -hmm. um, being the thing that connects the family yeah yeah well I mean, we, we we do say to, to young couples when they when they get married that um, you know do try to eat together I mean you can't always do it mm. you, you know but try throughout the week um, I'm not saying all three meals or something. that's no, no. possible yeah but you know try to eat a meal together mm -hmm. uh, where you can uh in the week and not and not in front of the telly or with the radio on, mm. um, so that you're you're able to talk to each other and that that is a really really big thing yeah. mm. i think that for the first five years of um uh, our marriage we we didn't even have a telly mm. and so we just had to eat and talk and and that's that's you know mm. a really really helpful it's interesting that she says yeah. That, yeah yeah and i would guess it's one of the ways you can tell things aren't quite right in your relationship with someone if you're not eating with them mm. regularly or if that's a difficult experience mm. yeah yeah that's right and it, it it really does encourage relationship doesn't it so it's it's possible on a sunday morning to come you know either on time or a little bit late you come in with your family you sit down you listen to the service you might have a coffee afterwards, talk with one person and then go. But there hasn't been really much time there to no. have a proper good talk with someone mm. um, or to share a struggle or to say something you're thinking about. Whereas at a meal, you have to do that. You're together for a couple of hours with a smaller group and it just naturally moves on to how's life and how's your work and what are you doing at the moment. And 
So it's a chance to build, it's a very good relational mm. exercise, isn't it, for, for building relationships, which you can sort of, particularly when the church gets a bit bigger, you can kind of hide from that a little bit. Mm. As I say, you can come late, leave a bit early, and you can mm. keep doing that. Whereas if you commit to eating together, um, it's harder to get away with that way of thinking about church. Mm. Um, exactly right. And you see it right in the start of the Bible. Um, I love looking at, at Eden. The, the more you look at Genesis chapter 1 and 2, the, just the more wonderful the world that God made us to be in with him is. Um, and something you, uh, you might not expect, but is a really important part of being with God and in his presence and living with him, is eating. Mm. Um, in Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 9, a really important feature of Eden is this um, it says the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food mm. so you know there's he, not he could, he, could, he could have made us like solar thing you know oh, like yeah. we'd have a solar battery thing on our heads yeah. and we got all our energy from the sun yeah he? but he's chosen not to do that he's in created a whole digestion system yeah uh, in, in order to yeah. so it has to be important because why not just get energy from yeah. the sun and also not just um create a basic function that we need to put something in us but the it, diversity and the range and the beauty of this you know all kinds of trees trees that were pleasing to the eye so not even just stick them in your stomach and they feel good but yeah. they look good and they yeah. smell good and, and taste they, good and they're different they're shapes and, pulp, pulp. yeah and yeah. they and they're all good for food and yeah. uh, you yeah. just see the you see god spreading out a banquet in front of his people in his presence that was mm. that was the intention god had which mm. was to eat with us and to to sit around that table and to enjoy lots of different flavors and foods and things mm. and then eating has that disobedience to it as well yeah because the thing that they weren't meant to eat they ate yeah it's quite quite interesting that eat that's sort of yeah, he, the whole fall is based on sort eating, of eating or not eating. Yeah. yeah, it is almost as if God has said, "Here is my table. I want you to eat with me, but don't go and eat without me over there. Mm. Don't eat that thing. Yeah. I'm not there, so don't go and eat over there." Um, and so Adam and Eve, humanity, had a decision to make: Am I going to eat at God's table, mm. or do I want to start my own table? Mm. Mm. Um, and then throughout the Old Testament you know feasting was a part of communal life wasn't it so i um, mean the lord if you look through leviticus and uh, the law there was a number of festivals that god commanded his people to observe mm. and uh, they they all involved eating you know there was going to be some kind of sacrifice made and uh, they'd be able to eat the meat and um you know that was very important for gelling them together particularly mm. as a particularly as they grew mm. and they started to spread out you know having these kind of markers in the calendar where they were commanded to come back together to feast would remind them of their corporate identity mm. and what god had done for them and um you know food within every meal and i know you, you, you sort of talked about this within every meal is the idea of redemption isn't mm. it that, that something even fruit you know something has had to give its life so that we can be sustained by it um, and that would be true of everything that we mm. eat, something mm. living has died mm. so that we can live. Um, we, and, we, we and redemption is written into the meal. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. yeah but we can't survive uh, on our own, which I, you know is a, is a very humbling thing, isn't it? We can't live without something outside of us coming inside of us. And of course, Jesus uses that, doesn't he, about himself? He's the bread of life, mm. and we need to eat of him. Yeah. Um, but if you go back to Leviticus, uh, the, you know, there's that, there's all, all these different um, uh, sacrifices. But the fellowship offering, the fellowship sacrifice, you've got um, the, the person bringing a lamb or something like that to be sacrificed. And God has his bit, there's the sort of fat put on the, on the altar and burnt up. The priest uh, has his bit of food. And then the, the, um, the worshiper, the person bringing it, has his food. So the whole idea is that that we do sit down and eat mm. with God. Um, it's a one pot meal, isn't it? <laughs> that you're all <laughs> yeah. taking bits from. Yeah, yeah, a one a one pot meal. That's a good one. Um, but 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 it's felt that's that is seen as fellowship with God, and, yeah. and God says He's He's pleased with that. He smells that offering. Yeah. He's pleased, and yeah. we should be pleased. Yeah. And, 
and that was that was in the tabernacle which was meant to be this sort of little eden wasn't it like a little window back to how things were meant to be how god actually intended things to be so you have eating in eden and then you have eating with god in the fellowship offering in the tabernacle and it does seem that or at, at these points in the bible where god's people are really fellowshipping properly with god mm. there is eating involved yeah. so the promised land was flowing with milk and honey and when they ate there it says they all sat under their own fig tree and and vine so there's this idea that they're sort of almost back in eden like when they're right in with god and then um when solomon comes he's the wisest king of all uh when he's ruling rightly um it says at one point that you know they they were the people of judah and israel were as numerous as the sand on the seashore they ate they drank and they were happy they ate they drank and they were happy <laughs> such a wonderful like line isn't it yeah. that's yeah. sort of me on holiday um yeah. I'm I mean, eating if, and drinking if, if and life is happy. only that, then yeah. we're in trouble because Jesus uses that phrase, doesn't he? In right. His, uh, parable of the yeah, rich man. But sure. Absolutely. Yeah, that, yeah. That is, God wants us to enjoy this. Yes, because there's a difference between eating individually, yeah. but the point was at this time in history, they were really quite rightly under God, in yeah. a sense, because their, their king was obeying God yeah. and was wise and built the temple and all this stuff. So it flowed out from him to the people. Um, and and then yeah so you get this picture that when you're with god you have a full belly and you're happy and i think the, 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 the kind of quality of the fellowship around eating as well is so important isn't it? because i was just thinking about that problem of, you know better a bowl of vegetables with yeah. peace than a fat calf with hatred hmm. the idea is you could yeah, you could have the most you know the best food that money could buy but if there's no unity with fellowship terms of poison in your mouth mm. and so really there's lots of our the church family in the world would dream of the sort of asda yeah. shells that we have but if you've got even a little bowl of vegetables <laughs> together mm. and then there's a kind of person that mm. yeah. yeah and then you, you see Jesus when he's criticised Uh, because he's eating with sinners, and mm. again, that's a, that whole thing is that 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 salvation is is coming into this feast, and, uh, you know, um, and, and they, they they think it's the, the religious people think it's wrong, but Jesus is still and then look with Zacchaeus as well, isn't it? I come into your into your home, mm. and uh, and you often find Jesus eating with people, and it's part of feast. Mm. And he's 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 moaned at, isn't he, as being a glutton, yeah, uh, and a drunkard. Yeah. So he's obviously eating quite a lot with people. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, but I mean, that's part of him saying the sinners have come into my family, mm. into the place where we sit at table, and they're welcome. To that. Yeah. And obviously, the feeding of the five hundred thousand is just an amazing illustration of Jesus feeding us. And, and not wanting us to be hungry um, and yeah providing for us in the way that we were meant to be provided for God giving us food for our bellies mm. the wedding banquet I mean, that's now new creation life is described isn't mm. it like the God is illustrated as a feast where we sit down with all the Christians you know mm. the great and small from all history and we sit together and yeah. you know, the Lord Jesus is serving us at that meal oh. in that story. Wow. Um, he's, he's feeding us and giving us life. Um, and, then, and then the Lord's Supper that he's left uh, for us. I mean, that that was at a feast originally, obviously. Mm. Wasn't it? The Passover feast before he went uh, to the cross. Um, but he's he's left that whole thing. Has I mean, in John's Gospel, there's in John 6, there's the bread of life and we need to, we need to eat him. Mm. Um, I mean, he's not cannibal, but he, he's, it's the whole, it, we need this from the outside, in, inside of us. Yeah. Otherwise, we're hungry and empty. Yeah. Um, we need bread of life. That's why that, that whole sad thing, I know we say this quite a lot, but when people are looking for life in themselves, and yeah. not, for, not life in Christ, who will come into us, it's a very sad thing, isn't it? Mm. But then he, he, he gives this uh, more formal sort of, uh, thing about the Lord's Supper, you know, you, you eat this, drink this until I come. 
Mm. So, so rem remind yourself in this 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 simple meal of bread and juice, or uh, you know, wine, uh, uh, because because the kingdom you, you you're waiting for this this great feast of the kingdom to come. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a good point. Similar to what you said, Tom, about the proverb of you know, it's, it's not it's not about full bellies now and here. Heaven is not here. Um, and Jesus says, in, uh, you know, um, I tell you the truth, I will not drink um, the, the cup of wine again until I drink it with you in the, in the new creation. So there's a sense in which we eat and drink now, but knowing this isn't the end mm -hmm. and this isn't the greatest meal. And the point isn't to have a full belly at all costs in this life. The point really is uh, we want to be with Christ again in that new creation, drinking that vine with him again. Uh, that's where we want to go. And we remember that, in a sense, whenever we eat, in a, in a way. We, that's why we, we thank God for the food. Well, we always, it's kind of the most regular prayer of the day, isn't it? When you sit and, and you eat, and you thank the Lord for the food. Um, and in a, in a way, we remember, we, well, we look forward to, rather, the time that we are going to eat again with him. And when he was resurrected, first thing he did, yeah. Oh, one of the first things he did, rather. Cook barbecue uh, fish. Barbecue fish, yeah. 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 Fish for breakfast. And then when the church is, is uh, you know, officially born in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit comes, uh, you know, they gather together and, and, it, and it says they devoted themselves. And then there's these things. So they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Well, you can say, well, yeah, that's a, a big thing. But alongside that mm. as, as if it's as just as as important mm. is and to fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer so it's quite interesting that food is is part of mm. that what are, what are, what are sort of foundational things that church is yeah. mm. so we I, th I think really churches need to be eating together uh, more of more often and it's um, why it's why the corinthians get such a scolding isn't it at that point because yeah um, their feasts have taken a massive downward turn because they are, um, instead of this idea of coming together and one anothering, mm. and making sure that everybody is being served properly and everyone's got the right amount, there are people turning up early and just gorging themselves mm. on the food and the drink, getting drunk even, so that some people who come a bit later or on time perhaps, mm. uh, there's nothing left. And so the whole the whole culture there is not one of equality and inclusion and servant heartedness and everyone gets the same and we're all under god together it's become a totally mm. selfish exercise of what i can get get my fill and then clear off mm. i don't care about you and that seemed to be just the opposite of what the meals are intended to yeah. be about that's um, like a drive through kfc isn't it where you don't have to talk to anyone you yeah. just want to fill yeah. your boots and then go. Yeah. I, and I, also I say, can you give me all the burgers? <laughs> yes. Not, yeah. I, yes. Yeah, is that I burger going as well? Yeah, is that exactly. theirs? Can I have it? Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, it's interesting. So I, I, I was in one church um, and uh, even though I was a pastor of this church, I, I, I sat down next to a lady I'd never seen before and uh, uh, said to her, oh, hello, uh, you know, are you here? This was a Presbyterian church. And uh, she said, yeah, no, I've come because it's communion. Because they'd have communion once a month mm. in the service. And I said, oh, I, I've not met you before. Um, are you coming to the church lunch afterwards? And she said, but no, I wouldn't do anything. Like that. I'm not <laughs> interested in that. Uh. And I said, well, I don't think you should take communion because that's, that's really, really out of order. Mm. You want nothing to do. You want a private little religious thing yeah you know, and that's what she didn't want yeah but she didn't want fellowship with the church well that's just nonsense mm. Mm. Um, yeah and, uh, she wasn't happy about that conversation but yeah. she needed to hear that because yeah. she shouldn't be allowed communion if she's not going to commune <laughs> um yeah so, yeah yeah i mean i think in our membership course we do talk about the importance of eating together and we, we use the language not of command obviously but expect and encourage i mm. think so you know, if you are to be a member of the church, you know, obviously it's not a law, you know, that you, you have to join us for the meals. But we do say this is a really important part of our life together. We would expect you to come as a member and encourage you to come, you know, regularly to the, to the meals for all of these reasons. Um, 
and I think that reflects how central it was in, in biblical life. And even, I mean, just looking at Galatians here, how Paul absolutely goes at Peter, and he even writes it in, in Galatians 2 at a, mm. at a feast, uh, uh, but, but he wouldn't mix with the Gentiles. Mm. Um, uh, he would only mix with his, his like. Uh, and Paul just absolutely says that's not gospel. Mm. And it's, it's quite frightening the words he uses, even to Peter. Mm. So, you know, again, the, 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 there can't be. Um, we've got to be careful, haven't we, of little groups in churches, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Jews here, the Gentiles there, or whatever it is, some nation here, um, and we're not eating with them, mm -hmm. we're eating, you know, mm -hmm. we might not be able to eat their food, that's a different thing, but, you know, uh, there's got to be a mixing, and, mm -hmm. which, is a, which is another thing of the new, uh, new, uh, um, mm -hmm. the new creation, isn't it? People from every nation, tribe, it means it's the wonderful banquet mm. smorgasbord as they say yeah. when you when we talk about it like that it's um it's a no it's a no-brainer isn't it that we ought to eat together and we should eat in the presence of god and he's given us good things just thinking about how satan tries to trick us and deceive us i mean the first lie ever was involving food wasn't it and it was um you will be satisfied in a different way to god said you will be satisfied yeah um and so i suppose you know on a Sunday morning when you have the option to go and do something else or be with the Lord's people and eat with them. I, I find this pull myself. Sometimes like, oh, I've talked a lot this morning, I'm quite tired. It would be nice just to have a little, you know, sit in front of the TV. I feel like maybe, theologically, Satan works that way to pull us away from eating eating together, yeah. especially with the Lord's people and with the Lord. Um, he will he will say things like, yeah, that hunger you have can be satisfied in this way. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Jesus is fasting, isn't he, in the wilderness? And, and Satan comes to him and says, Are you hungry? Turn these stones into bread. Um, be satisfied in a way other than God has commanded you to be. Um, and nowadays, uh, is he not doing the same thing? You know, like I think about the white witch in The Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe, who offers Edmund um, Turkish delight. Yeah. And it turns out in the end Delicious. to be um, stale bread and water. Yeah. Whereas. The, his brothers and sisters are feasting with the Aslan in the camp, aren't they? Um, so, so we, you know, we have needs and desires. God's made us that way. We want to be filled, and Satan will come along and say, "Oh no, you, will, you know, your tennis club or your, you know, your whatever your uni mates, mm. you know, go spend time with them rather than the Lord's people." Mm. Um, I think and it I gets think us that just way. Just linked to that, I think it, it's so. Um, I think for kids particularly, I mean, we're, I was just thinking about, you know, we do have food at so many of the things that we do. So our breakfast church mm. on Sunday morning, the, the lively service for little ones, we call it, it begins with, you know, toast and a bowl of cereal. You yeah. know, hub club, the kids club we have here during the week, that has food. The International Cafe has food. Mm. Um, and that's one of the great, that's one of the beauties of it, that all sort of nations and ages... Um, can access corporate meals, can, mm. can eat together in some way. It doesn't exclude any, anyone. Um, and it's such a source of enjoyment for our kids. You know, the breakfast church, the idea that you can have like Nutella on toast at oh. breakfast church. And they've got this cereal called Cookie Crisp, which oh, yeah. our son only discovered at the last breakfast church. And it's like, Dad, there's this cereal and it's their little cookies. <laughs> <laughs> it's cookies. It's yeah. made of cookies. Is that food? Is so, yeah, well, that's a different question, yeah. But it brings such uh, enjoyment, you yeah. know, um, stuff like that. That's Eden, isn't it? Yeah. That's all kind, you know, good for the eye, pleasing to the eye, good for food. That's yeah. that's a little snapshot of glory, isn't it? Yeah. Discovering, oh, Dad, look, yeah, yeah. cookies in a cereal, know, just really small ones. You put milk on them. Yeah. What about sort of veganism and vegetarianism and stuff? What do we, what's what would we say about that? I mean, because there, are, I've, I've heard yeah. some Christians sort of blast vegetarians. You know, they should eat meat no. because because something has to should have to die for you to eat. But, yeah, uh, I, yeah I, I mean, I think that's, I think harsh, that's a difficult case to make biblically. I mean, you know, you, if you look back in Eden, it does it doesn't look like originally they were eating any meat. No, you know, because death hadn't come. But that into would the be world. because of after the fall. Yeah. Right? After the fall, yeah. 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 So they were certainly eating fruit and vegetables and all kinds of other stuff uh, there, but um, not 
you know, the, the lifeblood hadn't been poured to the mm. floor at that stage. Yeah. Um, whereas after Noah comes out of the flood, you know, it specifically says, you know, you can, you can have meat, you know, meat, meat for food and yeah. stuff. So, um, I mean, when you think yeah, about think the fellowship offering and the other burnt offerings that they had to do, the, the burnt offering, the sin offering, the guilt offering, they all involve, apart from the grain offering, they all involve uh, an animal dying, whether it's a bull, a goat, a sheep or a bird. Um, and there was a sense in which the life is in the blood. Um, and so there is a sense in which eating <laughs> meat animals is is linked with God showing us something. Um, well, there was prohibitions in eating blood. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Even into the New Testament, you find that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Although, you know, Jesus says all, all foods are fit to eat because it's not what goes into you that makes you unclean. That was just an illustration. Hebrews, um, I think, 11 is good for this, isn't it? It just says the tabernacle and all its customs are just an illustration to show us our uncleanliness and that Christ is the is the, the true sin offering and all that sort of stuff. Um, so what would you say? Like, the- theologically, can you argue being a vegetarian? No, you can't because God demands the blood of animals in the Old Testament think massively. And if gives us if- the freedom, you know, this side of Eden yeah. Yeah. gives us the freedom to to eat and to not not just eat in a in a sort of guilt inducing way but to eat and be thankful and to enjoy i mean it's interesting when the prodigal comes home Mm. the father who is clearly a picture of god says fantastic he's home slaughter the fattened calf Mm. it's right for us to feast and uh it's not a vegetable dinner at that point you know um and that proverb i quoted only the logic of it only works if the fattened calf is the preferable meal, yeah, because um, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, but, but but we're also told to look after our animals. Oh, and, absolutely, and, and, and yeah, some yeah. Pe- and, yeah, yeah. Some production of meat is disgraceful, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and we don't we don't want that. I, I, no, I, and um, and I I think some people, I mean, just don't don't like meat or haven't been brought up with it, and yeah. it does it's just fine, isn't it? Yeah, uh, or, or some people may say I want to be a vegetarian because I think the production of meat is so gross I, I don't like the idea of that and that's fine isn't it mm. i think it's when it becomes um a theology mm-hmm. of saving the planet or um uh i'm better than you because i'm not having anything die mm. for me uh that can be absolutely absolutely mm. wrong yeah because uh something has to die for you yeah. and that's christ so all of the animals dying are a picture of Christ mm. dying, giving their life so that we can have life. Mm. And so I think that uh, uh, when you turn it into that sort of theology of this is why I don't do it, mm. I think you're in trouble. With veganism, which is sort of the next step, uh, I think there is a lot of that sort of thinking of we save the planet. We are not saved. We are the saviour. And uh, I think, um, I mean, of course, veganism is a very dangerous diet to go on. Um, you've got to be very, very careful with that because you have mm. to take, you've got to make sure you've got yeah. vitamins and proteins and stuff like that. Yeah. And then the sort of trend of these things. I mean, I was looking at, uh, what was it in a, a vegan chicken burger thing? It's, it's not really food. It's sort of mm, pulp. Um, it's just sort of um, weird protein that's mashed up and tastes synthetic, h- horrific. Yeah. Um, well, the thing I was looking at tasted horrific. It's, it tasted like there was just tons of sugar in it, actually, in order to attract kids to um, a, a vegan diet. So I think it's anyway. Mm. Well, I'm not a dietitian. I, I have to say, um, I, the, the way we consume meat nowadays is 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 very different to how they did in probably, biblical times yeah. it's, because it's, it's probably excessive. I, I walk into a supermarket, the fridge aisle, and I, you don't even recognise animals. They're just no. products packaged neatly. Yeah. All the blood's gone. Yeah. Very sanitary. But it, the 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 fellowship offering that they that you would bring to the tabernacle, mm. um, you would kill the animal, mm. and you and you would chop it up even, mm. and then the priests would take the bits inside at the entrance of the tent. But you had to go to your flock, pick your best animal, yeah. bring it in your arm. You know, you felt the heat and the warmth of its living life in your arms as you bought it. And you would have to, you would have to kill it. And I, I think my <laughs> attitude to meat would certainly be changed. I think if I had to, not that I would get rid of it totally, 
but would I cons- consume less, for example? Mm. Would I feel closer? Would I feel more that something has died to bring me this mm. meal if I was mm. the one who was doing? I think absolutely. Yeah. There's something. There's something that must have been very helpful for the Israelites when they when they killed a, a sin offering to have seen physically the the life leave mm. that creature yeah. and you saw death arrive in it mm. and you thought that was instead of me uh, and that will make atonement for my sin so so you know we're very sanitized these days aren't we to these sorts of things yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. you're right and the, and the production of i mean you know pigs in europe is pretty pretty poor of mm. course. and you know uh, the way they're treated and we shouldn't treat animals like that just to get cheap meat and mm. you know, birds and chickens and stuff like that the way they're treated is 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 hor- horrific have mm. you ever been in a uh, no oh, yeah, well i have been in an avatar but have you ever been in um you know a chicken what they call it oh, coop, battery farm battery yeah. farm yeah. it's just horrific yeah mm. so you look down and it just goes endlessly it's like one of those massive Amazon uh, buildings, mm. and then all the chickens' heads are just sticking out, and they can't move. They, no. they you know, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I, I mean, with it's as you say, you know, it's fine. You know, people have got all kinds of. So some people will feel that very keenly in their mm. conscience, mm. and will think about it a lot, and they might even say, "I would like to do a little bit more for the planet and stop the production of mm. animal feed or whatever." And that's fine, isn't it? And we. We cater for that. So often on our corporate meals, we'll say mm. any dietary requirements because we're basically happy to flex and change to have all kinds of people in because we exactly. don't want dietary things to be a barrier to the bigger point of eating together, yeah. do we? Um, yeah. And it's when it becomes, I won't eat with you if you're going to serve me, or, you know, then that's, it's become too big a thing. Then. That's um, exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yep. Yeah. Food. What's, what we got for dinner? Oh, not much here, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, um, we got those little things. What are they cooking? Oh, cookie, cookie crisp. crisp. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we got yeah. some of them. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for tuning in, and uh, you can find um, previous podcast series that we've done on our website, sermons for you to download, and uh, hopefully you can access that, and it will be a blessing to you. Thanks for listening.